The Shape Builder tool allows you to add separate vector shapes together to create more complex shape designs. And you can also use it to delete overlapping shapes in order to help you create new designs as well. To get started, let's look at the guitar design I have here. The finished illustration on the right was created using these simple shapes you can see on my artboard to the left, and I'll show you how it was put together. If we first of all locate the Shape Builder tool from the tools panel on the left, or with the keyboard shortcut of S to get to the tool more quickly, we can then go ahead and select all of the layers we want to interact with and take a look at the context toolbar to see the options we have available to us. As you might expect, you can add, take away, and create new shapes with this tool. And by default, these options are all deselected. This allows you to make your shape selection first or make multiple shape selections and then decide from one of the options. And as I approach the shapes with my cursor, we're given these visual indicators showing us which shapes we can interact with. So I'll select these overlapping areas here on the left and these sections on the right. Then I can go and select delete to remove those shapes from my design. With the main body of the guitar, I'm going to change this to add beforehand. And now every time I let go of the mouse button, we can create our shapes rapidly one after the other. This is no doubt a great way to work when you're experimenting with designs or if you're used to using a tool like this as it can really speed up your workflow, being able to quickly create shapes in this way. And when you look at the finished design again, you can easily see how by retaking these steps and then adding some additional flourishes and elements, you can create something interesting really very quickly and easily. In the next example I have here, I want to introduce the idea of creating gaps with the shape builder. And you can see how I've simply taken two ellipses, then duplicated them on top of each other, making sure that the ones at the bottom of the layer stack are a bit bolder than the ones above. So now what we can do this time is try a different drag method instead. So I'll change to line, and I'll also make sure that we have these extra settings enabled too. So I'll keep both clean up unused curves and clean up unused areas enabled, and I'll also keep use style from first selected on as well. Now when I go to make my selection, I can easily highlight the areas I need with one smooth motion. And once I release the mouse, I've converted those four shapes into one single curve, with my intended gaps helping me to create this traditional infinite loop symbol. Alternatively, if I undo those steps, I could also use the third option, which is to create a new shape from the selected areas. This has kept my original ellipses intact, allowing me to go back and try a different variation if that was something I needed to do and I can simply turn those previous layers off to end up with the same result as before. The last example I wanted to show you is a way to combine a few of the methods we've just looked at. Here I have something similar to my infinite loop, but I'm going to create a more complex interwoven knot type of design. So again, I'll make sure I have the shape tool selected. I'll select all of my ellipses. Then this time, I want to make sure the add option is deselected. I also want to switch back to freehand so I can select along the curves of the shapes and make sure I have the other options enabled too. Now I can go ahead and start to select the various parts of the design that I want to keep. You'll notice that there's a particular way to achieve the knotted lock we're after, which involves making sure we select an even number of segments each time to help keep the design looking even and symmetrical once we get to the end. And once we've selected all of our segments, we can go ahead and select add from the context toolbar. And just like that, we've created our new interwoven knotted design. I'd like to take a few extra steps to separate this shape and give us further flexibility. So with our curve layer selected, I can then go to our Boolean options in the toolbar and choose divide. As you can see in the layers panel, this has broken up our shape into multiple separate layers. So now by using V to select the move tool, I'll go around and select each segment to create groups of each of the circles. And I'll use shift to multi-select and then Command G on Mac, Control G on Windows to group them. I'm now left with just four groups and I'll give each one a new color. And this is just another way to help get the interwoven knot design to be more effective by just adding a few extra simple steps. The Shape Builder feature is a really flexible and powerful tool in Affinity Designer. So hopefully these examples I've shown you have given you an idea of how you might be able to use this feature yourself. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.